Today's teaching comes from James 3, verses 8 in the mirror. And I will tell you what we're talking about, and then I'll tell you why we're talking about it, okay? It'll be really good, and it's going to help all of us, because the point is that we want to live victorious for Jesus Christ. And Jesus lived victoriously, and we are supposed to as well. We're not supposed to just be Christians and then um, being thrown around with every wind of doctrine, with every um, wave that comes through. We're supposed to be ruling and reigning and taking authority, but if we don't know how to do it, what do we do? So now this is the, what we're going to do, and this is how we do it. It's called God, God's operating system. And if you haven't seen those words in the Bible, it's also called righteousness, God's way of doing things and the way God thinks. And you can go to um, Isaiah 55, 8, I believe, and it says in the Old Testament before Jesus came that God's ways are higher than our ways God, and God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. That means that the spirit realm, the supernatural realm, the realm that we're now in with Jesus in our heart is higher than what's going on around us, what we see. So again, James 3, 8 from the mirror talks about the law of works, which is operated by willpower and the power of the mind, cannot match the results or effects of God's way, which is the law of liberty, which is the law of faith. So I'm going to say it another way. Doing our own thing our own way, leading with our own plans, will never come close to what God's way brings, not only with results, with peace, with um, joy, with no sickness, no toiling. Another way to say it, works and willpower do not equal faith. So we can't be in faith. We can't say that we are in faith and then do, leading with our own works and our own willpower. That would be mental assent. We can say we have Jesus in our heart and we're just going after it and doing what we think we're supposed to do and asking God to bless us. That's what most Christians do. And I did the same thing. So that's what God is trying. He wants us to talk about this because it's very important. And today was one of the first times ever he gave me a word, meaning for everyone. He gives me a lot of prophecy for a lot of people all the time. And that's nice because it's private, but this is a big one. But right now, let me say a few more points. Other than the obvious point of God's results, you know, are always better than when we do things our own way. The reason this matters is because when we don't stop and get ourselves out of the way and then embrace God's operating system, which is through grace and righteousness by being in the word and letting the Holy Spirit like overtake us, then we're being deceived. We really are. If we want to get honest with ourselves, we're being deceived, which me, which is ultimately frustrating. And then we run into roadblocks. We run into issues. We run into, it's not as smooth and seamless. And the results um, will be coming maybe, but then the enemy one way or another gets in cracks, like through sickness, disease, through um, appliances breaking down, through other issues. And not, th not saying that other things aren't going to happen, but when you're walking in God's operating system, you have authority over the washing machine. You have authority over cars. You have authority over your home and weather. And it's not, we don't, like, this is not all at all about cutting anybody down. We're all growing in this every single day. This is, this message and this purpose is to help everyone know who we are in Jesus Christ and what we're called to do. And if we're not seeing others do it, it's going to be changing very soon because God's glory is here and he's doing signs and wonders. So you may be thinking to yourself, I'm already very successful in what I'm doing and I have Jesus in my heart. So this topic doesn't apply to me. Well, this is from the Lord. Yes, it does. First of all, it's not condemnation. It's not competition. And there's never any scrutiny or pointing fingers. This is the, from the word of God. That's why you can see the scripture. At, there's so many scriptures on the mirror Bible does the great job of um, t t using the words about doing it yourself versus law of faith, doing your own willpower mindset versus trusting God. And so after I give you this word from the Lord, then I'm going to give you examples. So, you, so I'm not going to just tell, point fingers and say, we're not doing it. We're going to show how to do it. Okay. Um, so this is God almighty saying loudly. And this is a quote. He told me this. You don't know what's around the corner, but I've given each of you my Holy Spirit to guide you in everything. When you, me, when we don't tap in 
to God's operating system and learn, he said, and learn my voice and my ways in all areas. He told me to even say, including your cup of coffee in the morning, including what type of workout you're doing at night. And then he told me to tell, because this must be for someone, even the church that you've been attending and you have questions about, every area needs to be addressed with him. Once we do that and continue to do it and get in practice, we will continue. If we don't, we'll continue like the rest of what we see around us. Um, what do you call it? Carnal Christians, excuse, my, excuse me. And when doing so, when we do that and live like that and don't listen to a still small voice, the problem with that is God says, you're tying my hands from rescuing you. You're tying my hands from supernaturally abounding to you. So it's not so much of you're not listening to God. I'm not listening to God. If we aren't, this is his way of operating. If we aren't operating in his way, letting the Holy Spirit lead in every little thing and getting in the habit of knowing his voice, then we don't give him access. See, he gave us free will. He wanted it this way. He didn't want a bunch of robots just bowing down to him. That's not any fun. He wanted us to love. He loves us and he wanted us to choose to love him. But we do that. It's a, it, it is faith. It's stepping out in faith and saying, I've never, I'm 55 years old. I've never done that before of just letting God lead. Well, that's why he's trying doing this by one little step at a time. Another quote, if you would stop being so high minded, and this is applies to me too, and stubborn, come off your high horse of doing things your way and let me, God, lead, orchestrate everything in your life. When you do that, you grant me access back into your life. And then he says, so I can protect you from the evil one, warn you of upcoming situations to avoid, and give you major insights that will advance you and your family 30-fold more every day, saith the Lord. You might say, I want 100-fold. But you know what? He said 30-fold every, 30-fold more every day. So I would like to see who's increasing 30-fold every day. That would be nice. Everybody should be doing that because God wants to do that. Another one last bit, he said. I don't want to say this, but I have to. He said, I did not call Lisa to do these videos for fun. I've called many, he said, but they were too busy to obey. I have imparted into her these truths of mine, saith the Lord, for every single one of you. Yet when you or I don't listen, or when we think it's too deep, or doesn't apply to our life and our family, or our work, or our job, then we're being deceived. You're being deceived, he said. Last little bit, what, what he said this morning to say. I love you, my children, the Lord said. I have so much abundance for each and every one of you that you literally cannot store it all in your earthly lifetime. Thanks, mom. You cannot store it all. Thank you. He has so much for us. And he said, you literally cannot store it all in your earthly lifetime. Yet, most of you, he says, continue to do life your way and going all out, trying to impress others or impress yourself and thinking that God's saying, I'm proud of you, saith the Lord. No, I'm not proud, he said. That's not of me. Pride is of the liar. Pride is selfish. I am love, saith the Lord. And I've been perfectly pleased with each and every one of you. Ever since I formed you, I'm going to repeat that because he said, I am love. The Lord of God Almighty is telling us, we know these things. He's wanting us to know he is love. And he's been perfectly pleased with each and every one of us ever since he formed us. So we don't need to be impressing him. What we need to be doing is loving him so much that we sit back and make appointments with him. I know it might not be easy to listen to. But he said, he, this is what last thing, he said, so make the heartfelt decision to allow me, allow the Lord to teach you his operating system. He says, T allow me to teach you my operating system and give me your undivided attention at a set time each day, at least, he said, and you will clearly hear my voice and my ways and our victory journey will flourish. All right, now let me get to today's lesson. To this is one of God's operating system. And it's different than what we've ever heard before. And so the point of it is to like just listen 
it might not make any sense in the natural, but it will. It'll like you listen with the Holy Spirit and you be open. Because when I started reading these things, I'm like, whoa. And I was reading it when I was working a job. And so I was involved with rewards for performance. And I'm like, okay, so I'm working a job, but then how do you how do I do this? And he said, that's not the question to ask. The question to ask is, are you willing to do it and just say yes? And I'm like, okay, yes. And so then he started doing it. And let me explain. The word gift means things given without payment. This is what God does for us. This is what God has always done from the, even the very beginning. The word reward means a thing given in recognition of one's service, one's effort, or one's achievement. Now, for the purpose of today, I am not cutting anybody down or any job down or not saying not to reward. That Let the Holy Spirit guide you. But the point of today, he said... This is in regards to your assignment, your place of work, your career, your job, if you're a stay-at-home mom, all this. It's what you do every day. It's your assignment. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. We are here to bring the blessing to God's people. But if we're not living in the blessing and his operating system, we cannot successfully do that. Just teaching people how to make money is not God's operating system. Just teaching people how to love other people is not God's operating, is not all of God's operating system. Just teaching people how to be free from sickness, disease is not all of God's operating system. God, God's operating system envelops it all. Luke 4, 18, you can go to that scripture. It says, Jesus opened the Bible and said, I have, God has anointed me to preach this to the um, poor, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. That is for each and every one of us because you can go to Matthew and it says, God is, um, the Lord has imparted me with this authority. Now you go and do the same thing. So it's not just reading the Bible and seeing what Jesus did. Jesus is an example of what we're to be doing. And he clearly chose to listen to the father. And so are we. So let me wrap it up here. These are examples of gifts from God. This is God's language versus the reward language. And you can see some up here, but I have some more. Being a blessing is from God. Giving, being, giving something after someone performs is the world's way because it's, 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 um, promoting, making things happen. It's promoting doing it yourself, receiving versus earning. I will tell you, my parents are probably the biggest blessings of anybody I know on the planet. They're always being a blessing. And in the past, it was getting hard to receive. It was hard to receive sometimes because I'm like, you've done enough. You've brought me breakfast enough. Like, it's amazing. But they taught me to do the same thing. But if we don't learn, to, if we don't receive it, then we're not being obedient. But the opposite of receiving is earning. Satan has taught us all that we need to go earn a living. We need to go make a living. Kenneth Copeland taught me this so well in the blessing book, which is just explaining the Bible. We don't. Earn, we're not here earning a living. We're not here making a living. We're here on assignment. And if we really learn how to tap into God's operating system, which he's taught me to do, thank God, then he's the source. Our giving is how we are blessed. Our giving, the ministry's giving is how this ministry is blessed. The personal giving is how I'm blessed. It's not a coincidence that my, my parents bless me. It's a blessing. And yet God sees that all I've been doing since I was born, I, that something in me, I've always wanted to be a blessing. So it is seed time and harvest, Genesis 8, 22. All right, receiving versus accomplishing. Receiving is God, accomplishing, trying to make things happen, trying to be better in a sense of if I'm better, I'm more valuable. That is the world. Of course, we are, God created us to um, dominate and subdue over the fish, the sea, the valley, and not over other people. God taught us to, of excellence, but it doesn't tell us our value. It doesn't make us our value. When we live to accomplish, then it can get out of balance where we're serving the accomplishments and our assignments, making it a goal versus the assignment. We should be on the assignment, like actively being Jesus on the assignment. It doesn't matter if I was selling pharmaceuticals, you know, you're selling pharmaceuticals, you're selling homes, you're, um, a ballet teacher, you're a, a stay-at-home mom, you're a corporate dude, you're a, a, a tech person. It doesn't matter. Every assignment we have is not about us, believe it or not. It is about where God has placed us to be to emanate him. 
And the more we learn how to emanate him rather than be a better employee or be a better seller or be a better whatever, like let him improve us. Like it's not saying sit back on the couch and watch TV. That's being lazy. That's not being obedient. And that's not what I'm saying. So of course, Satan will try to twist things. What you have to do with the word of God is take it to the Holy Spirit. Say, I might not like what she had to say. If there's anything I need to know in that Holy Spirit, let me know I'm open. But the point is to be open. Let me wrap up with a few more. Um, allow versus make things happen. Patience versus being hasty. Calm and peaceful versus being rush, 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 rush. Pressure, 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 pressure. Pressure is of Satan. He pressures. The Holy Spirit does a tap. Why don't you do this? If you don't listen, tap. Depending on what it is, it might be a quick tap. Now, if I get a second tap, I get upset because that means I've been too busy to pay attention to the first tap. When I first started this process five years ago, I probably got tapped 10 times. I wasn't, I didn't know. And he has grace and mercy. But for me and my relationship with the Lord and how we've been growing in this system, if it takes more than two taps, you know, it's a sign to me that I got to slow it down and get back in the word. And that's for all of us. So it's not, it's just barometers. All right. Following his command versus making our plans and asking him to bless it. Haven't you heard of so many people who said, Lord, please give me something. Please let me know what you want me to do. All right. He lets us know what he wants us to do. Right. And then we don't get back in our closet and say, thank you, Lord, for showing me how to do what you just told me to do. You've told me to build houses for people. Thank you. I'm going to go on out and do it. That's not what he said. He said one step at a time. I've told you to build houses. You need to get back in the prayer closet and the way you're going to build these houses, even if you've done it for 50 years, you still go back and say, Lord, how are, how do you want me to execute this plan? And you sit until he tells you, you don't go out and make the plan happen and then say, Lord, bless me, bless me. Or two weeks down the road, Everything was going great. What happened? Well, what happened? And then you say, oh, you're on your knees begging God to help you. What happened is that you went before God. I went before God. It's the most frustrating life of all time. The, the way that God has planned it is simply Genesis 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The same process. He blessed us. He told us what to do. He, he made Adam. He put the blessing on him or however the sequence goes. But he gave him... He gave him the animals and then said to name them however he wanted. He didn't say, do you want animals? Do you want a wife? Do you want a house? He didn't like, it wasn't all over the place. He gave him a plan and then gave him freedom on that plan. So you see, you see, it's, it's not about the whole, you know, do whatever you want and ask God to bless it. Adam, before the fall, the Lord gave him the animals to name. And then he gave him, I know I'm repeating myself. The free will to name the elephant, to name the horse. That was God saying, I I'm giving you this as gifts and you name them. This is how, this is your part of it. The same exact thing as today. He's given us life and he's told us what to do. But most people do what they feel, do what they think. And then, then they run into roadblocks and stuff. And then it's, I, I did the same thing. And that's why I surrendered. I just didn't want to keep, it, I, it was just enough. It was a mess. Okay, love and mercy, which is God's way, are put up, put up with something and then think about something else and hope it'll go away. No, the thing about God, he has an answer for every single thing. He has an answer and a process. All things are done decently and in order. I think that's 1 Corinthians 14, 40. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right, submit to God first with everything versus doing it all by myself and asking him to bless it. Okay, I thought I had more sheets. That's it. So the point is, if you understand, it's grace. What I learned this morning again is that grace is God's gift to flow in the Holy Spirit. So it's like he dropped us on this earth and said, I have a plan for you. And then you say, what do I do now? Okay, go here. What do I do now? Go here. And if you don't know what to do, you're, the backup is always a blessing, always praising him and always thanking him. And he has a plan for us. So the, the message is that he wants everyone operating in his operating system. And this is why, you know, this keeps coming up. The liar tries to always say, 
Wow, you've been doing this a while. How many people are watching? How many people are following? And the Lord always says, Lisa, we're not looking at that, number one. Number two, if it was easy, everybody, be, we, it is easy, but if it was simple and fleshy, everyone would be doing it. Most people are in the past, we're not willing to surrender all and live for him. So the point is, he wants one soul at a time living and moving and operating in his operating system. It does no good to have a million followers or a million partners if everyone's not operating this way. Because the Lord has given me the assignment of mentoring one-on-one. -on -one. And if everyone's not operating this way, it's back on me. I don't want a bunch of followers. I want people to be operating this way. And if you are listening or watching this video and you don't understand how to operate in his operating system, watch all the periscopes, get the mirror Bible, and it's not difficult. It's actually quite simple. The most difficult part is getting yourself out of the way and trusting and say, you know what? I don't know how to do this, but I'm going to just step in faith. I'm yours to command. And every time I try to act out in my own, like just the other day I did that myself, I said, oops, um, it got me off. It got me a little tummy ache because I could tell I was out of my, so the Lord said, be in my word. So all we did yesterday is word of God day. You might say, well, I don't have time to do that. Well, you know what? Start small and you will. But God has the most for us. Remember what he said. He said, I have so much abundance for each and every one of you that you don't have enough places to store it. So why don't y'all be obedient? He's saying it to me too. And let me bless you. And let me, you'll be able to give so much away. You'll be able to just, it's just flooding all over the place. That's what he wants to do because he wants us to be blessed. He did not make us so that we would suffer. Jesus already did all the suffering. So glory to God. Have a great weekend and we'll see you on Monday with God's way of success with my dad, Roy King. All right. Love you guys.